it, it's all about that. It's being true to my beliefs. And sometimes I've had beliefs that I've had to look at and I've had to get rid of. And that's my thing. That's my motto. I always want to be moving towards my greatest life, taking that honest self inventory, asking the hard questions, but sitting with the hard answers. Welcome back to the Balance Boldly podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm Nikita Thigpen, your host and balance and relationship advisor, partnering with you to change the narrative so we can amplify intimacy within and across your relationships and you can have the freedom, flexibility, and confidence to thrive in work life and in love. I know it's here. We're coming to a close. We're down to the wire for season 18, y'all. I know, I know, I know. I have heard it. I have felt it. I have received the love. You guys have been intensely loving this season 18, which is all about those seed investments. We seed into ourselves and others around us that create the greatest, most sustainable and profitable harvest, both personally, professionally, financially, and spiritually. I am so grateful for all the love and the feedback that we've received, the experts that we've had the honor and privilege to host for you guys and hold space with have been nothing short of amazing. And today, I will not disappoint. We are making sure we are wrapping up this season with the best of the best. I am so excited. As always, I know my husband is like over me using that word, but it's, you know, it mean what it mean. I'm excited what I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Let's give Dina. Okay. (laughs) I am excited to introduce to you all. Dr. Kathleen E. Walls. She is an amazing woman, a phenomenal clinician of every single right. I could shout from the hilltops. Just the few conversations that I've had with this beautiful young woman. And you know, I call everybody young. It doesn't matter what the age is. Their spirit. She has such a young and energetic spirit. This young woman is doing amazing things. And honestly, I don't even know if I can keep up. So let me just tell you just a little tiny bit about her. Dr. Walls is the owner and founder of Greatest Counseling and Consulting Firm located in Philadelphia, PA. For those of you who are on global places, that's in Pennsylvania on the East Coast. She is the author of a book under the same name called The Greatest Soul Journey. This book has been around for about, at this point, I'm going to say 11 years since 2009. She has lived by the spirit, Inspired Thoughts, Volume 1, which is her second book, and her third book, The Adventures of Froggy T and Bunny, which you know I love, a hip hop tale series. She is also the host of her own YouTube show called Dr. Walls and Friends. And in addition to all of this and the many other things that she has going on, she also happens to own Green Street Animal Friends Care. Dr. Walls is doing some phenomenal things in the the international film festival segment of life. She is also making sure that she continues to live her best life by traveling globally and living the life that she teaches others about embracing and facilitating cross-cultural exchanges. She is incorporating a holistic perspective of the development of leaders for young people, students, and rising professionals. I have to say, if there is one woman who is out here saying, I will not be limited by skills or talents or other people's thoughts, It is Dr. Walls. Welcome to the Balance Goalie Podcast. How are you today? Thank you. I am doing well. I'm about to shake a tambourine for myself. Yes. Look, look, we we, we got some. Hold on. (laughs) We are definitely both special people and we are (laughs) in (laughs) mind. I would love for you to share with everyone what made you decide to invest in yourself and start to really seed in your your writership, Mm. your clinical ship, your creative ship, your animal ship, you know, like all those pieces of you that are contributing to the world. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many um, moments in life where the seeding happened. And so I love this idea of seeding, right? And of farming and toil and labor. 
all of that happens when you plant your seeds. And I actually have a series workshop that I do called Greater Seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about like Jack and the Beanstalk, you know, they weren't regular seeds. They were these seeds that yielded the greatest, as you talked about, right? Create Mm -hmm. the greatest harvest. And so that's how I when I think back to like when I was five, it was always a matter of looking for how do I become better? And my inspiration, honestly, it came from the stories of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's where it came from. And it, it was just, I was fascinated by the stories. And I felt like if Jesus could do it, I could do it too. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, later on in life when it became, you know, I want to be like Mike. And it was like, no, that's not who I want to be like. I want to be like Jesus. Uh, And it wasn't about whether or not Jesus was God or divine or any of that. It was just here was this person that was living a human life and was doing all of these things, regardless of what society said. And he touched so many people's lives and he traveled and he was about healing. And it was like, I wanna do that too. I wanna do, and then when you read the Bible and when you heard stories, it was always, and you can do these things as well. Mm. And so the concrete thinking child in me, right? Because we know developmentally, when you're a certain age, you think concretely. If you tell me I can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And that stayed with me. So when they talk about your inner child, see that part of my inner child is still very much alive. And so it was always, okay, well, what do I want to do next? And then in the Bible, it would tell us, because that was the wisdom text that was used in my house, okay? So then in the Bible, it would say, you were made in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, then let's be concrete about this. If I'm made in the image and likeness of God, how do I understand God? What am I learning about God? How do I experience God? And regardless of what people teach me, because I want to look at that too, Right. I also wanted to look at what was my personal relationship. And I'm telling you, I can tell you stories from the age of five forward about my relationship with God. And if I can do it, other people can do it too. What happens is sometimes we just have to take the time and look at it. And so it was all of these pieces that added up. And even if we look at the story of Cain and Abel, God asked, a, just for 10%, right? Your, your, your finest, just give me your best and I'll take care of the rest. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, okay, that's all you want? You want my best? And so it was always a matter of let me give you my best. And so it wasn't about perfection. So I don't want people to think that's what it was. No, it was what is my best when I look at this and I'm done and this is the best that I can do. That's all that God has asked me for. And so then therefore that's what has driven me my entire time. And let me be clear. There were times in life where I didn't give my best. Right. And Right. And so I acknowledge that I apologize for it and I do better the next time because I wasn't always the best student, but I knew what I was called to do by the age of 12. And that was to become a psychologist. And that was very clear for me. And so even though life brought in what life brings in Mm -hmm. distractions, tests, you know, how bad do you really want it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And will you work for it? You know, all of those things, of course they happened, but I did keep my eye on the prize. And that seed that was planted in me at sixth grade career day about becoming a psychologist, because I chose between being a psychiatrist and being a psychologist. See, because my grandfather, my father's father was an MD Mm -hmm. and my father was a veterinarian, which is how I got into animal care. Right, right. Okay, so I have this generational, third generation doctor, pardon me. And I said to myself in sixth grade, I said, I want to be a doctor too. I want to be the first female doctor in my family, to my understanding, Mm -hmm. you know. And so it was like, do I be an MD like my grandfather? Because I can go that route and then I can do psychiatry. Or do I be a veterinarian like my daddy? And it was just like, I like animals, but I don't like them all like that, you know? (laughs) And so I didn't have the same passion that he had. Like when I looked at my dad, again, I went to Catholic school, uh, you know, from preschool through uh, 12th grade. Mm. I thought about St. Francis of Assisi. 
and his love for animals. So when I would look at my father, I'm like, oh, that's St. Francis of Assisi incarnate. Like he has that relationship with them. I didn't have it. I didn't feel like I had it at the time. Let me be very clear. At the time, I didn't feel like I had it. I was 12 and I wanted a horse. So, (laughs) (laughs) but, you know, so I said, let me basically forge my own lane. And that's when I chose psychology. And that just, and it's stuck, you know, and that's the thing about planting seeds. You can plant a lot of seeds, but all of them don't grow. That is so true. Right. But that one went into fertile ground and I just felt it continuously break inside of me. Mm -hmm. And so then I just continued to nurture it. And so Mm -hmm. it it took root, it took Mm -hmm. root. And now let's be for real. Whenever we plant stuff, what do they say? You got to plant it with some fertilizer we know what fertilizer is mm-hmm. so this means you got to go through some ish that's right, right that's in right. order to grow that's right and so you know on with that one you preach right. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so we you know that's what happened and so it, it's all about that it's being true to my beliefs and sometimes I've had beliefs that I've had to look at and I've had to get rid of yeah. Because they were not leading me to my greatest life. And that's my thing. That's my motto. I always want to be moving towards my greatest life, which then causes me to stop and reflect what's driving me, you know, what's motivating me, what's bothering me. Taking that honest self inventory, asking the hard questions, but sitting with the hard answers. Which is really difficult, right? Because, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of us, you know, I appreciate that, you know, your earlier story about being young and looking at your grandfather and saying, you know, you know, I I like what you did there, but not quite what I'm thinking about. And and, Mm -hmm. and knowing what you don't want is Mm -hmm. just as important as knowing what you do. Yes, it is. And especially when you were in that kind of gray space of like, hey, I like animals. I want a horse. You know, these are things that I I could do. You know, our family is connected to animal care. We're Mm -hmm. obviously passionate about keeping all human life safe and, you know, just all the things that you were doing, but still saying, but that's not quite it. Instead of trying to force yourself to walk inside someone else's footsteps. Exactly. So even when I took over, so when my father made his transition in September 6, 2017, Mm -hmm. and it came to me, you know, that was the yet part of the early story, right? So it came to me that I was to continue his legacy and continue to provide this godly service as my father had done for 41 years in the Germantown section of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And so it was to be able to continue to provide this service, but I had to figure out how was I going to do it, Right. right? It had to be my own way. And a friend of mine, one of my sister friends, she said to me, have you figured out how this is yours yet? Mm. And that question just stuck like a pin. It just hung there. And I would just sit with it and sit with it. And it was like, what can you do? Okay, well, I can go become a certified dog groomer. Now, Mm -hmm. that was never on my radar. Right. But after he made his transition, it was. So I went with the energy that was coming towards me and I became a certified dog groomer. Mm -hmm. Um, It's something that I do. Do I love it? No, it's not something I want to spend every day doing, but can I do it? Yes, I can. And do I find peace when I do it? I do because it is, I think it's such an honor to be with one of God's creations in such a private moment. And for that animal to trust you while you're doing that, like that is just something so peaceful and so special. And so I find myself really kind of doing more therapeutic grooming when I do do it because it's a lot of hugs it's a lot of cuddles and it's a, and they're looking at you like all right I trust you now don't you do anything to hurt me right be you know mm-hmm. exactly and then you know we so we turned it from an animal hospital into an animal care center mm-hmm. and we do the grooming we do and I have a groomer she had been a barber for 25 years and so she still does people hair, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but she's also been grooming her dogs for 15 years. And so she came to school with me. And so she's our groomer. 
you know, and she loves it. And see, so by following that energy, that divine energy to mm -hmm. open up the animal care center, now I'm able to provide somebody with something that they love to do. She actually wants to just work with the animals for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And it provides her with an income. Look at that for a second. You know, I, I want to dive into that for a few minutes. Because yeah. You, you dropped quite a few gems for anyone who's listened who might have missed it. Because y'all mm -hmm. was being distracted, walking right. on treadmills, <laughs> or telling y'all y'all special loving children to sit down somewhere. Um, <laughs> you dropped so many gems just now. And one of the ones that I would like to just open up and unthread a bit is you saying, you know, I'm doing something. First of all, I wasn't quite ready for it when I was younger. I had to you right. know, walk on my own lane, drive in my own path, mm -hmm. gain the tools and skills and things that I needed to do to sharpen for myself before I would be ready to add yes. this additional thing to kind of the, the, the toolbox of things that will serve me, but That's looking right. at it as just what it is. It is not necessarily your quote unquote purpose in life to do, but it is supporting you. And I think yes. we forget sometimes those supportive gifts that we have, yes. which, which is why people get locked in that confusion of, you know, well, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? Because I'm so good at so many things. You yes. are really good at many, many things, partially because you're gifted at many of the things that support your anointed gift. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And you're yes. like, okay, my love for animals, my ability to calm down, to slow down, to be therapeutic, to be compassionate and empathetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even for an animal, which some people don't respect at the same level. Some people do, right? Mm -hmm. Being mm -hmm. able to do that and you having that time for yourself, that stillness for yourself in a sense. And I know it's not quite still because you're dealing with, you know, moving yeah. animals, but to have that and be able to find peace in that moment while sharing a part of yourself and loving actually refuels you for the work that you are yes. supposed to do and simultaneously opened up the door, your gift, one of mm -hmm. your supporting gifts and you being uh, passionate and brave enough to go after it opened up the door to serve someone else to walk in their anointing. Yes. How powerful is that? Yes. So powerful. Make me take a tambourine. I'm right here behind you. Mama Rock is in the background. Yes. Like. How amazing is that? Because so yes. many people for, you know, everything that you talk about in the greatest soul journey and all mm -hmm. the things that you're helping people walk into their greatest life is some of that unthreading of look at the many layers of yourself and know that, know that everything that you're doing isn't necessarily supposed to be the thing that you're in love with, but it could yes. be opening up the door That's for right. someone else. How powerful That's right. is that? It, oh it's God. so yeah, it is. And thank you, God. I'm like, oh, she good. Yes. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yes, keep talking. Let, let, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my you know, goodness. It is. You know, and that's what happens. Sometimes we forget, hence this statement, you know, it's not about you. Yeah. It's not always about you. And, you know, we can even shift it and say it's not just mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. You know, but you have to follow it. In my motto, the greatest. And so the greatest stands for God restores excellence, activates talents, encourages spiritual transformation. Mm. All right. And so just in the breakdown, God restores excellence. That's just coming back to foundationally, who are you? Yeah. Right. How are you built? What are those areas in life that need to be addressed, that need to get cleaned up and cleared out of the way mm. so you can get back to center? You can get back in alignment with who you are and how you are, right? So you can be clear on uh, how you were divinely designed. That's all about that restoration of excellence. Because again, if we go back to the scripture that you are made in the image and likeness of God, that's excellence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So let's restore it. So your book, Selfish, I know it's not about you right now, right? But it is. <laughs> right. Your book, Selfish, which is, you know, such a phenomenal book. It Thank is you. so transparent. It is so healing. It is so transformational because it takes you from where you were to where you are now and it gives people a roadmap in the sense that they can do it too mm -hmm. right so it's inspirational as well and it's thank because you. you did you're welcome thank you thank you for putting it out there because there's right 
there's other people who have that story, but it's not their story to tell, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was your story to tell. It was your, your healing gift to the world. One of them, because you got a lot, right? (laughs) It was one of your healing gifts to the world. It is that example of restoring that excellence because you're able to tell your story. And it's like, this happened it could have pulled me away from my excellence. It might have pulled me in this moment, but there was excellence that kept reminding me, right? The excellence of God kept reminding me, I am excellent and I need to get back in alignment with that. Yes. Oh my goodness. I told you, we were talking before, Dr. Uh-huh. Rose is about to be on my promotional tour that I Yes. <laughs> Be a hype. I'm gonna open it up. Be a hype woman. Yes, I love it, and I, I do yes. appreciate that because it's both reflective of the synergy that we've already yes. realized that we have between us, and mm-hmm. that was, was clearly ordainedly created, you know, yeah. for us. Period. To yeah. walk in and embrace, and the timing that we met was just perfect. Yes, it so was. Levels. Yes, um, it was. And it, it's it's in sync with so many of the things that you are already sharing in the work that you're doing and your mm-hmm. ability to say, wait a minute, like, let's spread out these seeds, including some of the ones that you're, you're capturing from the trees around you. And, and that sharing of the kind of the framing of what you did so powerfully for, for my book, Selfish, thank you. That was like reaching up to the tree next door to your garden saying, you know, this apple looks good. Let me, you know, grab some and give that's right. some of the, you know what I mean? Like, that's right. And I don't think a lot of us do enough of that to support yeah. each other quite yeah. honestly, you know? And, sh- and share the fruit, right? Exactly. Because it's like, no, this fruit is good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, my fruit is good, but this fruit is good too. I ain't gonna deny it. Right. And you need to eat some of this. It has nourishment in it for you. So you need to eat some of this too. Mm. You know, and so from the moment I started reading your book, I started telling people about it. Okay, I need you to get this book. This will go good with your workbook that you wrote. I need you to check it out, you know, because it is important. We never know whose words are going to help heal somebody or help somebody along the way. You and I can say the same thing, but it can have a different impact on someone. You know, and instead of getting caught up, and I'm not saying it hasn't happened to me because it has, like, I just said the same thing. Why are y'all trying to act like, what? You know, but. I have definitely done that. (laughs) And and parents do it with their kids all the time. Mm -hmm. I know my parents did it with me. I've done it with my students. But here's the reality, that different tones, different presentations, right? It resonates with us vibrationally frequency wise. So we don't know whose tone is going to impact us at a certain point in time. And so it's important that the truth is the truth is the truth. Doesn't really matter where it comes from. All that matters is that we get it. Mm, mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. And so, and I look at Dolly Parton and Whitney Houston, they sang the same song, the same song, Mm -hmm. but right. And, and not to say that Dolly Parton's version didn't impact millions of people's lives. Mm -hmm. But Whitney Houston's version hit beyond the stratosphere. Right. And various reasons, the timing, the mechanisms in which her song could be promoted the way that it was had changed. So, but it's the message that still needed to get out. It was the ripple effect. I a thousand percent agree with you. When I think about the type of child that I was, and I'm laughing because uh, I tease my kids all the time, like, oh, if y'all had what I had as parents, mm, mm-hmm. some of the things that you guys do. But what, mm-hmm. what what I was thinking about specifically in reflection of what you said is that that child that needs to be told more than once, yes. and sometimes in a different way, don't touch yes. the stove. Right. Yes. Um, Yes. I know that I was definitely not the, oh, it's hot. Let me not touch that. You, you had to share your opinion of why I shouldn't touch that stove in a very different way for me to receive it and actually not do it. Touch the stove. Right. And, and although, you know, three different people in the house told me it wasn't until that fourth person came along and had the right volume, tone, grace, firmness, you know, to, to just say it. Um, right. And I think that to your point that sometimes we just need to hear it in a different way. It's not because the, the words have changed or the message, we just weren't ready to receive it. The first, exactly. Or maybe the 15th. 
time exactly that we heard it i think that is so powerful so yeah i have to ask you dr walls with everything yes. that you're doing because you you are doing a lot of great things in the world from mm -hmm. using your your braveness and your supportive gifts to open the doors for others like you do with green street care to mm -hmm. the clinical work that you do helping people maneuver through their rooted dysfunction and, and open up the space where they can have a, a safe space literally to start healing and creating yeah. the coping mechanisms that they do to your authorship and writing and, and providing your tools in a global way. And, you know, in so many of the various ways that you do that, not including the films that you are right. producing and created, <laughs> right. To, you know, broaden the message in a whole nother way from a cross cultural perspective and give yes. freedoms and rights to other people to be a part of that process in a greater way with all that you are doing. Yeah. How do you give yourself permission <laughs> to pause? <laughs> I know, you were like, I am doing all that. I'm not, I right. am doing all That's that. What, right, right. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Sometimes I don't realize I'm doing all of it because I'm I'm in motion, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so you're absolutely right. So permission to pause is something that I had to learn the hard way mm -hmm. over the years because I would just go, you know, constantly just go, 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 go. And so I wouldn't pause until I got sick. You know, I call those um, my... PTOs, but they were divine PTOs, personal timeouts, where I would get sick and it would shut me down. And so then I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And so I had to recognize my signs when I needed to take a pause. Okay. And so over the years, I learned that. And then going back to scripture, you know, the fact that if we just look at God made the world, what they say, and Mm -hmm. And six days and on the seventh day, he rested. Like, again, if you're made in the image and likeness of God, like there's a day that you need to rest, Exactly. like, like shut it down. Mm -hmm. And so there's seasons sometimes where I found that were resting seasons for me. Like I would just be sleeping constantly. And then I learned that the resting seasons led up to the, you know, a lot of, um, production, a lot of creativity. So I just learned to get in touch with my body, recognize when I needed to rest, make sure that I honor that. And um, yeah, just, just really got in touch with myself. And so I give myself that permission. And I also get excited because the more I rest, the creativity just comes and I create all types of things. So Isn't yeah. that the truth? Mm -hmm. Do you literally allow yourself those mindful moments, whatever that looks like for you in, in terms of time and bandwidth to be able to close off the, the normal productivity, yeah. the normal doing, the normal yes. busyness of the world? Yes. You get so many downloads, especially if you are so many. anchored, you know, yes. like you anchor yes. to the vine, everything just flows in when we exactly stop blocking it with our busyness. Ex exactly. There's a book for you. Stop blocking it with your busyness. <laughs> <Listen>. Yes. <laughs> If I could just remember, I swear I think in hashtags, which is so funny. And I'm like, if yes. I could just remember these hashtags that I'd be thinking in, oh, it's a million dollars for every one right there. Yes. It's so funny. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you know, and as you're talking, you know, I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to see my latest release in crisis. No. How, um, oh, so Please I tag me. No, oh, yes. It. So on my website, askdrwalls.com. Um, there is a page called Release the Cry in Crisis, mm. which I just did that seminar this past Sunday at the Phoenix Rising Virtual Summit, oh, which wow. was amazing. And if anybody's interested, you can get the replay from the Phoenix Rising Summit website. Um, but yeah, in the process of preparing the Release the Cry in Crisis part, uh, this spoken word piece, this poem was birthed through me and it's called Release and Cry, C-R-Y, Sis, S-I-S. Mm. Yeah. And so I ended up, it took about three days for me to birth it. And then I was given additional downloads. And then next thing you know, I was tapping 13 women from seven different countries around the world to send me images of themselves. And I created a visual arts um, piece that goes along with the poem. I and so you can this. take a look. Yeah, take a look at the poem. Obviously, take a look at the visual arts piece. And then I also posted the words of the poem because there are also points of reflection mm -hmm. as well. 
Yeah. yeah. And this is so the perfect time for that. I'm, I'm going to make sure that I grab that link from you yeah. uh, to, to put it at the bottom of the show notes. So for everyone okay. who's listening, I don't want you to feel like you can't get access to this because you can. Uh, yes. <laughs> Dr. Walsh, yes. kind of, is there a time limit on how long the replay is? or will it uh, be The replay, to my knowledge, they'll have the, um, of the, let me be clear, of the seminar, Release the Cry in Crisis. I believe that that'll be up for a while. It's a $50 purchase because okay. it's through the company that hired me mm-hmm. to speak. Um, and then as far as the poem, the Release in Crisis poem, as well as the virtual art piece, that's up and that's free. And also on that page are also the links to my notes that I did on this seminar as oh, well. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely add that. And that's available. Yeah, that's that's a gift. Thank yeah. you. That is yeah, so awesome. you're welcome. And that's you're a perfect welcome. tie-in for you know where should people go to get the most direct access to you? Whether it is because they just want to know how how you continue to be so great in your greatest work in this world, yes, um, or to get access to your book, or because maybe they need some support from a clinical sure. psychology perspective. Mm-hmm. So, you know, first and foremost, always go to my website first, askdrwalls.com. And I try to make it real simple, you know, and mm-hmm. then that's also my handle on Instagram, askdrwalls. And on that's probably the best place is my Instagram, because mm-hmm. I also have another page on Instagram called Walls of Wellness, where I give wellness tips and inspirational thoughts and i usually link the pages so if you just go to ask dr walls on instagram you'll get all of that information oh that is perfect you are such a gift dr walls thank you thank so you much thank you so thank much thank you we gotta, you're we welcome end, we gotta end up with some tambourine and some yeah <laughs> I know the editor is going to be like, I can't stand you. <laughs> that, that volume was way too much, but I love it. And thank you for celebrating with me um, and supporting me and showing up in fullness because I really do appreciate you, Dr. Walls. You are amazing. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody. Balance Boldly listeners. Ah! Wasn't she phenomenal? What such a great conversation on air, a way to capture not only the journey, but also the knowledge and wisdom of the greatest seeds that you can give yourself, whether you are in your resting or your releasing season. I loved all of it. It was such a powerful, powerful conversation. Um, and if you feel like you, you missed some of it, it's okay. Just push replay. It's really, really simple. Um, so as always, thank you guys as much as as I can possibly love on you virtually for honoring this time in this space and showing up and tuning in. If you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe, rate, and share this podcast. Help us ensure that the other ambitiously bold and brave have access to these valuable life, love, and business balance tools. If you would like to connect with me, I'm Ask Nikita on IG, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So you can get me just as simply as you can get Ask Dr. Walls, which is perfect. I love that we're both using that and we didn't even know it. How about that? That was so phenomenal. If you haven't picked up Selfish, Permission to Pause, Live, Love, and Laugh Your Way to Joy, it's available everywhere books are sold, praise God. Um, Amazon and Barnes & Noble seem to be people's favorite places to go to get the Kindle or paperback, so feel free to just look it up and go right there. In the interim, I want you to go. Create your balance and create your joy, but remember, do it boldly. Do it boldly.